Thanks for joining us for another episode of Mid-American Gardener. I'm your host, Tanisha Spain. And joining me in the studio today with lots of goodies are two of our panelists that you definitely recognize. We've got Jim and Kay in the house. But before we jump into all the cool stuff that they brought, let's have them introduce themselves and tell you a little bit more about their specialty. So Jim, we'll start with you. Well, I, I'm an entomologist, uh, a retired entomologist with the Illinois Natural History Survey. So I deal with the insects and mites and and uh, other things, critters attacking trees, shrubs, and flowers. All the creepy crawlies, huh? Yep. Okay, all right, Kay. Uh, I'm Kay Carnes, <coughs> and I am um, a Champaign County Master Gardener. Um, I primarily do <coughs> deal with herbs um, and flowers, and I'm also a volunteer at Allerton Park. And Kay grows a lot of heirlooms as well. She's yes. our resident heirloom expert. Okay, so let's jump in. Uh, the insects are here, and they are a foot, about, a flight, whatever. They are. Let's talk about them. What did you, uh, well, hopefully nothing live. Today, today. <laughs> I brought in um, some wasp nests. Okay. You know, lately I've been going to the internet and watching the internet, and I see so many programs on how to get rid of wasps. And I think, why are they trying to get rid of wasps when we're trying to promote biological control? Because adult wasps really are beneficial insects. They uh, control a lot of our caterpillars that destroy our crops, like the uh, cabbage looper and the cabbage uh, uh, butterfly, we, uh, butterfly uh, larva that feeds on cabbage. Wasps attack those kind of creatures, and so they really are beneficial insects. Why should we try to get rid of them? Now, in certain cases, and I'll talk about that, we do need to get rid of them because they are, you know, they, you'll get stung if you let them around. But um, one of the most common in the um, Midwest is the um, paper wasp. Mm -hmm. And it makes these kind of nests, uh, generally under the eaves of houses or, you know, any kind of place like that. It's generally on a uh, horizontal, situation uh, that they are plain. But I did have one one of these nests right on my front door, which is vertical, which is pretty unusual. Most, most is, it's on a horizontal, so mm -hmm. the nest is like that. But, um, you know, this is one that probably if you're going to be painting your home, you do need to uh, kill these because if you get near the nest, they will sting you Yikes. if you're painting. And they, they got a lot of uh, things now in the stores that you can uh, actually spray and that spray goes out maybe about 10 feet. <laughs> you so, need every bit of it. <laughs> so you need every bit of that. So that's a way to get rid of these if it's a problem when, if you're painting. And uh, interesting, uh, it's, it's true with wasps, it's the uh, queen or the female that overwinters. So in the fall, once we get killing frost and they all, all the workers die except the queen, she overwinters. And then the, the following spring, she'll start a nest. Now, this here is just how it starts. It's just this little teeny mm -hmm. nest that they start out with. And the uh, queen lays eggs in there. And then uh, when they hatch, she feeds them chewed up caterpillars. And then, uh, you know, as the uh, population continues to grow and workers are produced, then they take over the nest. And so then you can have a whole bunch of workers and uh, they feed the young. These nests are really for raising the young. They don't store honey or pollen like, like mm -hmm. bees do. So it's uh, interesting. Uh, this is one insect. of those moments where the education is so important because like you said, they are beneficial insects. Mm -hmm. They are, But really. we've sort of been conditioned to mm -hmm. run and scream. That's what yeah, I do. And I, you know, <laughs> and I will talk after Kay here about some that are pretty nasty and that's the yellow jackets. The so, other one, the, oh, I'm sorry, go ahead. the other one here is the uh, bald-faced hornet, and I brought this nest in because I thought you'd be interested to see that. You know, when you look at this, this is actually paper wow. that the wasp. Long before we humans made paper, the wasp were doing that a long time beforehand. And uh, inside, you can see this is where they again have this nest, just wow. like I showed you here. You can see what it looks like inside, and. Uh, these now, are, all these are e for eggs? Yes, yes. Wow. So they'll put all eggs in there, and then they'll raise their young in those chambers. So, uh, And they can build up big populations in the fall months. And then once it gets cold and it, below freezing temperatures, all the workers die. It's only the queen that survives, 
and she doesn't spend her time in there. She'll fly out and uh, hide under a, a, you know, maybe under some type of shingle or mm -hmm. some maybe in a hollow tree, and that's where she'll spend the winter. And then the following spring, and she's mated then, mm -hmm. and then uh, she'll survive the winter and then start the colony again. But you know, when you see these nests, just leave them alone. If they're not causing, they really won't come out and sting you unless you poke the nest. I mean, they will definitely come out then. <laughs> then, they, then you've got to deal with <laughs> but, them. But you know, if they're if you're not uh, concerned, I wouldn't be concerned about. It. In fact, I'd be happy if I had these things. You know. Well, you know, I don't know about happy, Joe, but that's definitely <laughs> entomologist speaking. Okay. Um, fascinating, though. And so, yeah. I, you may not know this; it might not even be a real question. But how many can live in here? How many bald faces? Oh gosh, hundreds, I'm sure. Hundreds. H hundreds, yeah. Okay. When it's when it's high population, it's hundreds. Wow, fascinating. Okay, thank you. All right, Kay, we're going to you now. Okay. Well. I brought one of my very favorite flowers, and this is called a pink peony poppy. And I love them because they come up on their own. They reseed, but they're not invasive. So you have one here and one there. Um, and they seem to kind of come up in the same spot every year. Um, it is um, a, a real poppy. Um, you can see here, this is the seed head. Um, it's not ready to open yet because it, it's really young, but it is a poppy. Now, and what is a true poppy versus? Well, this is a true poppy. Is it, the, what's it, the difference, I guess? Is oh, what I, I don't I, I would think of the seed head would be oh, different. Oh, got it. Okay. Maybe, you okay. know, I don't know. If, and perhaps the um, leaves might be a little bit different. Gotcha. Those are absolutely gorgeous. I have some at my house, too. Mine are more of a salmon color. Oh, okay. Um, and I love those pods because as soon as it's done flowering, I make sure I snap those mm -hmm. off and, and store them because I just really love the way they look. They just, yeah, that's they're beautiful. so gorgeous. Absolutely yeah, beautiful. it is a gorgeous. And um, when it's young and coming out, there's a little green. Mm -hmm. How long will the bloom last? Okay. Oh, several weeks, I think. Really? You know, oh, I, mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. Unless you get a lot of wind, they're kind of delicate. Okay. I don't know. Right. Well, we get a lot of wind, and, and they've stood it. They you do? Know, they've, mm. Once they start <clears throat> maturing more the flowers, I had one that the flowers were, you know, petals were dropping mm -hmm. out already. Okay, so a more mature plant will mm -hmm. hold the, the petals longer. Yeah. Really, really pretty. I it, just it, love this. Do you have any other color variations or? Are no, they, they're, it's just the pink. Yeah, just the pink. Yeah. Very cool. I yeah. don't know if there's, you know, other colorations that you can get, but this is, this is the pink. And now, how do you store, when you pop off the seed pods, um, what do you do with yours to let them dry? Where do you put them? Well, I'll just put them in a tray or, you know, pie pan. I use pie pans a lot mm -hmm. for drying, you know, little seeds and just let them go till they're dry and then put them in some kind of container. And then last question, do you uh, plant them in the fall or do you save them until the spring? I don't plant them. They just come up. <laughs> okay. <laughs> they reseed themselves. They reseed themselves. So the, seeds that, the seeds that you save in the pods, do you do you bring any of those in? No, I don't use Really? You I just let use, them do their own thing? Yeah, because, you know, I have enough that they're here and there and uh -huh. unless you wanted to put them in a So particular. can you purchase these seeds on the market somewhere? I That's don't know. I've never right. looked. For, I, I, I'm I don't trying even... to remember where I got, I think I got mine as a gift. Mine were a gift. I got mm -hmm. the actual plants and I just oh, put them okay. in the bed right. and that okay. kind of got them established a few years yeah. ago. Yeah. But yeah. they don't they don't spread too much. No. They're not, you know, invasive. They're, they're very well behaved. Yes, they are. And oh, just pretty to look plant. at and they That's... get really tall. Um, mm -hmm. Mine are very tall, so. Yeah. You think the deer eat them? They haven't, well, they haven't in our yard, but. Not yet, anyway, <laughs> right? <laughs> the only reason I think mine are safe is because they're tall. Mm -hmm. uh, or, I'm sorry, for the rabbits. We were talking about rabbits earlier. Yeah. I think the rabbits have spared them because they're up so high, high that they can't get them. But mm -hmm. I don't know about deer. I, I don't know. We don't have, we have deer around us and we see them on the edges of our property, but they don't seem to come in and, and bother. Well, you're lucky because they're eating, Jim and I, I garden out of, just, we're out of business. Yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> the lettuce was mowed down to the crown um, about a week ago. So, okay. All right, Jim, we are back to you with 
more things that can sting well, us. Well, there's uh, one wasp species that uh, in the Midwest is really quite troublesome, and that's the yellow jacket. They build their nest in the ground, mm. and uh, they, the female, uh, again like the other wasp, she overwinters, and then she finds a, uh, oh, a hole like a chipmunk may make or a bowl mm -hmm. mix in the ground, and then the, she'll start the colony underground. And they're very small little wasps. You know, this is one here. You can see how small they are. Mm -hmm. But they're very numerous in these underground uh, nests. And they're the ones that come to picnics. If you have a picnic outside. Oh, they like to join. Oh, they like to join it. <laughs> we had a picnic uh, quite several years ago for our graduate students. And uh, one graduate student brought in some donuts and he left the package open. Well, the wasp just came in there in droves. Oh. And, uh, you know, so we have a picnic, you got to cover all your food because mm -hmm. if you don't, and if that one wasp finds it, he'll go back to the nest and say, hey, I know where to go. And wow. So, they, so you, you don't want to have one, <laughs> one get a meal because they will show the buddies to come back. They're going to go tell everyone. So yeah. that can be a really a problem. Do they sting? Oh, do they, they sting? Do. They sure. <laughs> <laughs> and that leads into this little comment that at that picnic, you know, like the, these wasps, these yellow jackets like to go to sugary particulars. Mm -hmm. So we had a, uh, uh, this one student had a uh, pop can. Oh boy. And open pop can. And the wasp got in there and he took the drink and he got stung on the lip and that's oh, extremely gosh. painful, very, very oh. painful, you know. So, you know, oh you, you got to be careful about these uh, yellow jackets and uh, that's one wasp that if you have them in your yard, you almost have to kill them because mm -hmm. uh, they will actually come out and sting like mad mm -hmm. and, they're, you know, they're very abundant sometimes. So to get rid of those kind of things, you can go again, seven, the insecticide seven, S-E-U-V-I-N, is very toxic to bees and wasps. Mm. So you can spray that, or you can go and get a hornet or wasp spray, and they have plenty of those. Do that early in the morning before they come coming mm -hmm. out and spray around that, and I think that would control them. But that's one that, that you know, it's a good biological agent, but gosh, Yikes. it my, really um, stings bad. My dad stepped on a nest a few years ago, and he ended up having, I mean, he's fine, I want to say that, but yeah. he ended up having to go to the emergency room because he was stung multiple times. They yeah. were in his clothes oh. and he oh, yeah, yeah. swole up. I mean, oh, he yeah, really yeah, swole yeah. up and was uncomfortable. So yeah. he said they, that was the, the worst sting he'd ever felt. Oh yeah, yeah, they from an really insect. hurt. And you know, I was gonna say, how do you tell the difference between those and honeybees? Cause they look maybe a little similar or well, is that just Well, they me? do look a little bit similar, but their habits are completely different. You know, these are in the ground. So if you see them okay. in the ground and if, like I say, if you, if you have a picnic or outside eating, They'll come to that. So, gotcha. You know, the, the bees will generally do that. Uh, Their behavior's different. They behave much better. They, yeah. they look a little strong. There is one wasp, the uh, cicada killer, that also makes nest in the ground. But uh, I'll tell you, that's a gentle giant as a, cat, uh, as a wasp. I mean, uh, the, the only wasp with, I, I know of instance where it was stung a person that my fellow entomologist, Dr. Phil Nixon, said <laughs> that he knew somebody that stepped on one in their bare foot, you know, oh, so, gosh. you know, I got, but the other, I've had, I've had my hands right aside of them, their nest in the ground, and it's, it's only one nest in the ground, it's only the female, only mm -hmm. one, so, but they're great big wasps, I mean, they're huge, and uh, they're gentle giants, so we really should not try to kill those, I mean, they're, they're really mm -hmm. beneficial, and they, you know, they feed on cicadas, mm -hmm. so, um, that's okay. one that's nice. We got to get to know our, our wasps. And next time we come back to Jim, he's going to talk to us about how to keep them away or keep insects away from us while we're working out in the yard. So, <laughs> okay, all right, Kay, you brought in another flower. All right, I did. Um, this is butterfly weed. And um, it's one, of, again, another favorite of mine. Um, the, they get, they're individual plants, but they grow together so they almost look like a a bush, mm -hmm. um, and they my, the ones I have are probably this big in diameter. Wow. Um, <clears throat> but they're not invasive, they don't spread a lot, and they're very hardy, um, and the monarch butterflies like them very much. Yes. 
Um, so I have two. I have one in my prairie garden, okay. and then I have another one in another spot um, in my yard. But they just, um, it's actually a milkweed, mm -hmm. but, but it's different than the, the milkweed you think about. Um, it's, it's not as invasive as, yes. as the regular. And part of that is because their root system is different. Um, the uh, invasive milkweed, the actual milkweed, has um, roots that connect with mm -hmm. each other, so it's like a net. Um, but the butterfly weed, just each one has its own little root system, and they don't spread like like the. Gotcha. So they're well behaved, and they're beautiful. Yeah. Uh, yeah the whole beautiful when the whole plant, bush yeah. is. It's really pretty. And I see they're blooming. Do they bloom all summer? Will you? They would... bloom for quite a while. Yeah. Yes, Good they deal. do. Um, my plants have been blooming. Oh, I don't and know. have you seen any monarch butterfly larvae Not feeding? Not yet. Not yet. I mean, are there years? Have you seen them feeding? Yes, yet? yes. Yeah. They, and we've, I think we had one out at Allerton. And um, they... Because I'm really concerned about the lack of insects anymore. I mean, it's oh, just incredible the number of species I don't see anymore. I mean, really? just yeah. incredible. Yeah. What's going on? I hear yeah. that about the monarchs, but I didn't oh, know yes. it was across the entire... Sp well, and bees. Oh, we talked yeah. about bees, um, their numbers dropping, but oh, yeah. do you think that's things that we're using, and I know there's a lot of mm, I think it's maybes. something in the air by itself. Yeah, so, yeah. I mean, do. so many people just, the first thing they do when they see yeah. the bug is grab the spray. The spray. Yeah, yeah, I mean, it's yeah. it's very serious. I yeah. mean, this is really serious. There's so many insects that I don't see anymore. Interesting. Oh, it's really serious. Interesting, and I know how much that, we our food supply and everything mm -hmm. sort of depends on it that. Does. So hopefully we it can yeah. get some answers to that soon. I guess. Well. So while you're out working in the yard, if you've noticed gnats, well, they're not gnats, and Jim's gonna tell us the scientific name, but you know, when you're swatting or you're, those little flying insects are flying around your dog's eyes or face, right? We're gonna talk about those, and Jim's got um, a hack, if you will, to keep those away from you while you're outside working in the garden. Yeah, if you have an outside dog or a dog that goes outside, they always get around their eyes mm -hmm. all the time, and they do that with humans, too, and I'm down there working on my hands and knees, these little flies, they're called forid flies, P-H-O-R-I-D, forid flies. They look like little, um, almost like fruit flies, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but they're smaller than fruit flies, but they're just such a nuisance. They are a nuisance. Just a nuisance. So. And I notice when I'm sweating, they come around even more. I yes. don't know if that's a thing. I think that's, that's no, just I, my... That's true. <laughs> So, uh, do they bite or sting? No, or they, they just aggravate they just you. Aggravate <laughs> yeah. me. And do they aggravate? Anyway, uh, Dr. Uh, Bob Novak, the late Dr. Bob Novak, was in our department, and he said, Jim, all you got to do is go get a dryer cloth like this that you put in the dryer, mm -hmm. put that under your hat so that you maybe the you know it blow you know you got this under your hat so maybe it extends about that far. Mm -hmm. And it will keep those forehead flies away. And it's worked and perfectly. And it works, It huh? works perfectly. <laughs> Interesting. Yeah. You know, it makes me wonder if I just maybe uh, take one of those and rub it over the dog. It if could that'll be, provide. It might. It might. Interesting. Yeah, it might. It might try that. All right. Yeah. Hey, you never know what what might work. And we can report on that when you do that. That's right. <laughs> What's that called? Uh, something science, where where we're out in the community, you know, just lay people doing science yeah, experiments. Yeah, so I, yeah. I bet a lot of people are going to be trying that because the insects are horrible. And does that have anything to do with how dry it is? Um, do does insect population is it affected by rainfall? Oh yes, yeah. I mean, if you get a lot of lots of moisture, uh, you, the insects are very vulnerable to some of these fungi, mm -hmm. and even bacterial infections are, are more prominent when you get a lot of moisture. Mm -hmm. But um, so, are they thriving now since it's dry? Or uh, no, a lot the of the insects go... are not. You know, a lot of them are not thriving. Yeah. So uh, gotcha. So okay. It's, well, we really need rain in my area. I mean, it's just very, very, oh, yes. very serious. Oh, yeah. Very yeah, serious. I don't see a lot of insects, you know, either. Mm -hmm. No, something else is going on, I'm sure. Mm -hmm. I mean, and that, that started about uh, about 10 years ago. Mm -hmm. And um, there's so many uh, moths. And, uh, you know, at one time, 
Remember when you used to go out driving at night? Oh my gosh! You'd three have miles. To, <laughs> right, you'd have they to would clean just be up. hitting the windshield. You'd have to clean up your windshield. <laughs> yes. You don't have to do that anymore. Yeah, you know what? You're right. Yeah. You're right. And also, I live out in the country, and where there'd be a larger number of moths at the window at night. Mm -hmm. You know, with mm -hmm. the lights on the inside, you just don't see that anymore. Interesting. So yeah, we're in bad shape. I uh oh. Think. Clients has to come through for that one. Um, we've got a question for Kay. This is from Martha Williams. She wants to know if there is a certain way to water tomato plants, um, both in pots and in the ground, for success. And so you're the tomato lady. <laughs> Tell us your ways. Well, for the for the in ground, I use a soaker hose. Okay. Um, it's a very it's a lot regular hose, but it has lots of tiny. Uh, holes in mm -hmm. it, and, and I hook it up to my regular hose and just let that go um, till the ground. And it's nice because you can get it in a specific area. Mm -hmm. um, so that that's my recommendation for... Um, and how do you me. test uh, whether it needs to be watered or not? I mean, <laughs> we, the, right you now just, you could tell. <laughs> <laughs> you could, yeah, everything throw the test needs, out the window right now, right? Everything, <laughs> everything <laughs> needs to be watered. <laughs> I've been spending so much time watering yes. stuff. Yes, yeah. and you know, it's I'll look out the window and one of my plants will be looking kind of sad and then I'll rush out there real quick and get some water on that one. Then you go to a different part of the yard and something else is looking sad oh, and it's just, you're just putting out fires all day long know, trying to keep yes. everybody know, cool. Um, what about pots? If you're growing tomatoes in containers, do they like to dry all the way out? Do they like to be um, moist? You what? have to be careful. You don't want to overwater them. That's the worst thing you can do. It's better to let them dry out. And, you know, if you see them a little bit droopy, then mm -hmm. wet the soil really well. Um, I, just, <laughs> I just stick my finger down in the pot mm -hmm. as far as I can. You know, and and if it's it's dry uh, all the way down, I'll give it some water, mm -hmm. but not a lot of water at a time. Mm -hmm. I took your uh, advice, and I I got soaker hoses last year was the first year that I used them, and I didn't have near as much um, wilted foliage or mm -hmm. fungus or. You know, when you don't have all that moisture kind of on the leaves from yes. top watering, uh -huh. it makes a huge difference in the health of the stems and the leaves. Yes. So um, that's a, that's a, a really plus for mm -hmm. soaker hoses because it puts the water where yes. it's needed, not all over the. Uh, and plant. I want to ask you what you think about this. I put the hose, I put the plants in, put the hose in, and then I put the mulch on top of that. What are your thoughts oh, yeah, on that? Is that okay? Yeah. Okay. You just got to kind of. Pull the mulch back sometimes to see how dry it is. Just to make sure. Yeah, yeah. Okay. But so far, so good. Yeah. So, okay. Um, Jim, you got, do you have one more thing you want to discuss? Well, I do have, you know, sometimes uh, birds will hit the windows. Yes. Particularly in the fall. What I do, I put this netting, it's called bird netting, over all my windows. I have a big, uh, have a bay window, mm -hmm. several, you know, panes. So I put that on and I don't have any more bird hits on that so interesting you know and you can see through that I mean it's yeah. if you get one that's you know like this it's very and I don't mind looking through that mm -hmm. in the window mm -hmm. so it really works and you can just tack that underneath the uh, eaves of your home and hang it down and it, it really prevents bird hits interesting say some birds okay my mother-in-law was having that problem this spring and she put a a plate that had a, a, a picture of a bear's face on it, like Winnie the Pooh <laughs> She just stood it in the window, and the bird never came back again. Really? <laughs> yes. So wow. do they do that? Is it their reflection? Is that the old wives' tale, or is that true? Is that why they run into the window? Uh, oh, I think it's, you know, I think that they look like it. Well, I think the reflection sometimes, you gotcha. know, it looks like the sky. So they, oh, uh, you know, the reflection. and they just crash right yeah, into it. Yeah, particularly in the fall months. Yeah. You know, They're I have a lot of, you know, cardinals and uh, downy woodpeckers. And, yeah. My, <laughs> my husband had a cardinal kept pecking at the chrome parts on his truck. <laughs> and I mean, it, it, it pecked at that thing all day. Oh my gosh. It, it just kept jumping up. And, and I have the same with an reflection. indigo bunning. Oh, so pretty. They're so pretty, but that's by <laughs> at the, the garage window. Bang, 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 all the time. You, <laughs> you think you get tired. You think no, you get tired. No. I know. That's, or I take to that. It was about a car. It was a robin. A robin. Uh, <laughs> he, he, was, he was there all day yes, long. Yes, they'll I, do it all you day. You know, I think it's, uh, you know, uh, 
behavior that mm -hmm. they think it's another male and mm -hmm. they don't want another Because I male. noticed there was a female rather than not too far from Oh yeah, where he, he doesn't was want at. anybody uh, messing with he his, his that his other guy <laughs> needs <laughs> to get out of town. <laughs> I'm huh? I'm I'm so. rid of him. <laughs> <laughs> too funny. Yeah. Um, one quick last one. We've got about a minute or so left. Someone's asking about what to do about slugs on hostas. You guys have any tips for that one? That is from Sue Deathridge. Um, she said the slugs. I never see slugs on my house. I don't either, but I've, I've heard people well, one, say. So one party said that you use beer. Put little yes. put little cups of beer out. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now you got to if you got a raccoon problem, you're going to have intoxicated raccoons. A bunch of drunk raccoons <laughs> That's in the yard. So that could be a thing we need. <laughs> A drunken <laughs> raccoon party yes, at three but, in the morning. But apparently that does work. I mean, they, they go into that to feed on it and then they drown in the beer. Okay. What a way to go. What know? a way to go. <laughs> a pirate's life. Okay. We are out of time. That was so much fun. Thank fun. you guys so much for coming in and bringing in all of your show and tells and sharing your knowledge. And thank you so much for watching. You've got some assignments. Get some dryer sheets. Get a couple beers. <laughs> you, we've got you covered here on the insects. So thanks for joining us and we will see you next time. Good night.